Hello and welcome to Software Pulse building Java desktop applications and I'm John McNeil. In this video we're going to take a look at using Gluon's scene builder to create a graphical user interface for a Java FX application, the um, speech tester application that there are some other videos on. So let's start off by going to our IDE and having a look at part of the program we've got in place. <coughs> so what I've got here is I've just got a very basic um, class with a main method that just would start up a Java FX application. And what I'm going to do is I've created a package called view, it's just the way I tend to do things, and I'm going to create a new Java um, FXML document. So if you look under the Java FX options, there's a new FXML document. So I'm going to create that. And I'm going to give it a name. And I'm going to call it speech UI. And I'm going to have the root element as an anchor pane just because that's the one I want to use. And what this will do is it will create an FXML document which is just essentially a document with some XML in it. But once you've got that, what that allows you to do, if I just close down that, is I'm make sure you're in the package view. I don't know whether you can see that there. I'm using um, Eclipse by the way. Um, so package explorer view. If you've set up your Eclipse and Gluon scene builder correctly to work together, you can simply right click on your FXML document and then say open with scene builder and that will launch scene builder with the file. You don't have to have it integrated, you could simply launch scene builder and then just navigate to wherever on your hard drive is this FXML document and open it that way. So this is what we've got and you can see there's our default anchor pane down the bottom there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add to our anchor pane a um, grid pane. A grid pane is just allows us to have a series of um, columns and rows. By default you get two by three. Um, so I'm just going to add a column because I want three columns. And I'm going to come over here, and what we're going to do is we're just going to put some padding around here. So that's just going to give us a bit of, um, sorry, set the margins. Um, then we're going to set the, have a bit of a horizontal gap, and we'll have a bit of a vertical gap, make it both a seven. And now I'm just going to put some padding at the top and bottom. And that starts to look like what we want. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to randomly set this up to some values. I don't know why I picked that size. It looked good when, with all the components on it, but um, it's not a standard size. So I've got three rows here. Um, I can't remember how many I need. I'll go with 10. See how we get on. <coughs> so 10 rows. So what we're going to do is down the left hand side we're going to have some labels. On across, across the top we're going to have a um, 
a title. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to my controls and I'm going to look for something called label. Uh, there we are, and I'm going to stick one just um, I will put it I don't really know, I'll, I'll, I'll just put it there for the moment um, in fact that's what I'll do with all of them, I'll, I'll stick them all in there I'll change the values of them in a while And then to go along with that, we are going to have some fields. One of which is the top one is going to be a what they call a choice box. So it's a drop down where you can pick from the choices. So that's going to go in there. Because of course the top one is just our title. And then the others are going to be um most of the others are going to be text fields. So it's so that's just an ordinary um, ordinary text field. And then finally we're going to have a text area on the bottom field. And we're going to put a text area there. Now if I can remember how to do this uh, so yeah, so we're going to do a column span here and say that's going to span three columns for that title bar and then we're going to go to our properties part for that f label and change the text and that will be uh, speech tester and then we'll center it um, I'll come back and sort the fonts and things out later so what we'll do is we'll just set all of these labels while we're at it That gives us those bits. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and sort this out. And what I'll do is I'll just spread it across there. Um, and I'm going to change the font to um, I find the, the font system on here very difficult to use. Um, I'll just go with Calibri and somewhere around right about there. Um, I could have actually made it bold as well. Uh, okay, and we don't want it black. Oh. Um, I don't want a gradient. Um, let's go with color. Move ourselves somewhere down the spectrum like that. And the content display, that's what we want. We want it uh, center. Oh no, sorry, wrong one. We want alignment, center, center. So that's what we want. There we are. 
So if we come over to this text area here, um, I'm going to make this row span um, something like seven. Um, oh, the next thing we need is a button bar. I think the button bar is in the containers. Yeah, button bar. So I'm going to put a button bar on row eight. scan those and then we're going to add another button because we want two buttons on there okay button number one is going to be um, okay and button number two is going to be clear okay so There were nine rows in the end. Okay, so roughly how we want it to be. Um, that's our box standard layout, um, and you do get the option to preview in a preview window. So that's what it would look like. So that's pretty good. So just remember to save it, or uh, it will ask you to save when you exit. But you just save, and that will run it back to the file in Eclipse. Sometimes it takes a little while for that to happen, but um, there's the first part of just laying down our objects. In the next part, we're going to take a look at creating a controller class for that user interface and being able to put a event handlers for when you press the buttons and also to um, set up the fields so that you can interact with those fields um, during your application. So I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far and we'll finish it off in the next video so be sure to look out for that and thanks for watching.